much for this time to be here. I, I just love gathering with men. And uh, 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 Lord, these are priests of uh, households and families. And I just ask your blessing upon them, upon their churches. I, I just ask your blessing on BMIC, Lord. And thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to them today. I just ask, uh, Lord, I'm just a simple man here to give them a message. And I just ask by the power of your Holy Spirit, you just work through me uh, to encourage them as men. And uh, just uh, be with us today as we look at your words and we're inspired by your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. 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 Good morning, men. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, I want to thank all of you for the opportunity to just be here and uh, talk with you today. I love the podium today. This is awesome. This is awesome. So I'm Troy Rowan Fans, um, raised in a small hometown in uh, northern Iowa, Ventura, Iowa. Population 700. So I'm a small town kid. Uh, went to Luther College, uh, moved to Austin, Texas, because uh, I, I didn't like the cold and uh, wanted to get away from the snow. And uh, I'm, I'm tired of the snow again, but uh, God moved me to Central Illinois, and I love Central Illinois, and I love being here. Um, in Austin, I served as a children youth minister for a couple of years. Uh, in that, I married my, or I met my wife. God brought my wife into my life, uh, Amy, and we moved to St. Louis, where I went to, I went to seminary in 2001. And uh, so I've been serving in ministry for over 15 years as a children and youth pastor and, um, and doing that. I uh, became a campus pastor. No, first of all, uh, I was brought back and uh, I served at St. Paul's Luther Church in Decatur, Illinois for about uh, five years. And then I was called to be campus pastor at the LSA in Decatur, uh, where on a daily basis, um, I'm a high school theology teacher and I mentor um, <coughs> young adults every day. I'm a spiritual father to them. And uh, I, just, I just love it so, so much. Um, I've also served as the lead pastor of a new uh, church plant called uh, Tree Community Church. We call it Tree for short. And Tree is a little bit different. We're a, we're a house church network. We meet from house to house. And we come together on Sundays in a celebration in order that um, I just believe that we need to reclaim our homes for Christ. Right? Amen. You hear that? We need to reclaim our home. Because it all starts in the home, right? Yep. right. It starts in the house. Uh, I just noticed every qualification for an elder, it starts in the home. And if you don't got it going on in the home, um, you can't have it going on in the church. And so mm -hmm. men need to be called up uh, to that, living out uh, the vision. We have the vision of Acts 20, 20, meeting house to house and uh, in the temple court. So um, um, I just want to see a church that uh, fills uh, my city and uh, fills uh, your city with the body of Christ uh, everywhere and multiplies um, all over. Okay. I'm also the father of two. Uh, Ty is my son, my daughter Remy. Uh, just a privilege. I went to China twice, and um, both of my children are adopted from China. So um, it was there that God called me to just kind of look at the underground church in China and house churches. And uh, it might be a future thing in America, too, to uh, the, the, the movement of the house church and the underground church because uh, maybe growing persecution <laughs> of the church and, and believers and stuff like that. So, And I um, also uh, love to... Um, to read, um, I'm a runner, I'm a cyclist. I've got my brother here, Shane. Um, we did a half marathon this past fall together. It was just awesome. So I'm just so glad that Shane came with me from Decatur. But uh, uh, today I want to share seven. I want to just share seven words that have become the foundation of tree and uh, just kind of the biblical commands of Jesus and simple. And these are just kind of foundational words that um, a missionary in South America had found uh, not only, not just to educate people, but this is based on obedience, like loving obedience, just giving these words and images and, hey, say, um, uh, could you live this out? Because you've been called to a lifestyle, not just to know things, but to, to live them out uh, in our lives, okay? So it's kind of like, uh, anybody seen the movie The Karate Kid before? Yeah. Hey, yeah? Karate Kid, love that. Kind of wax on, right? Yeah, off. Wax off. <laughs> wax on, wax on. And he was doing wax on, wax off, and he thought that was... You know, you, the, the old man was just kind of uh, manipulating him. And uh, he's like, I'm not learning karate here at all, am I? But by loving obedience to this, uh, was it Mr. Miyagi? Right? Yeah. Mr. Miyagi, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, he was actually learning karate. And I think in just basic loving commands as we obey the Lord, we're actually learning about the kingdom and how to live out the kingdom. And so I just want to share those with you. These have become the core principles and practices. As I lay a foundation, our church is not, uh, not large at all. It's a small church, but we're just laying the foundations for the future. And um, that's so important. Okay, so the first word, I, I don't know if you guys want to write these down, but first word that, um, that we use at, tr uh, at Tree is turn. Turn. you gotta, you got to turn. In Matthew 13, 14 through 15, 
It says, uh, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Jesus is saying, you will never, or you will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For the people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and what? Turn. 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 And I would heal them. In Mark 1.15, the time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Repent. Turn, metanoia, turn around 180 degrees and believe that there's a different way to live your life. There's a different lifestyle. You've been living one way, there's a different way to live. And so the first word is this turn, repent and believe. Turn from your old lifestyle of yourself and the kingdom of this world that you've been wrapped up in. By God's grace and power, Jesus' loving command to us is to turn, to repent from our own sinful, rebellious, empty, hollow lifestyles that are self-focused and worldly to be uh, new and obedient and righteous and abundant and life-giving lifestyle of Jesus Christ. And one thing I want to tell you, man, is uh, encouraged, I've been encouraged, is I don't want to be a, a life-sucking person in my life. I don't want to suck life from people. Um, as a man, I want to be a life-giving person to uh, my marriage and, and kids <coughs> as he works through me. Okay, so looking at that. Also, Colossians 2.8 says, let us turn from the hollow philosophies and the ways of this world and rather turn to Christ, right? So how do we turn? The first one, turning from my way uh, to God's way, to God's word, to God's will. The purpose um, is uh, for, for me to, is it is about me or is it about him? And uh, turning from that. Or turning from the world's wisdom to God's wisdom. Um, a lot of people turn into self-help books, but you know what? God's got help in His Word, and I believe in His Word. Do you believe in His Word? Yeah. I believe in His Word, and I believe that it is truth, and I'll stand up, and I'm going to represent the next generation. I believe in that truth, that it is the truth, and that we can live our lives. And turning from my flesh to God's Spirit, I want to be led by His Spirit, not my flesh. And so I need to turn to Him every day. I need to yield to Him. Because Jesus is just not my Savior, you know? I just want to go and say, hey, thanks for the fire insurance, uh, Lord. <laughs> Jesus is my Lord, and Amen. he is Amen. my boss, Amen. my king. Every day, uh, he's guiding me, and uh, I want to turn to him. Word number two that we use, wash. Got to wash. John 13, 8 se or, through 17, no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, um, unless I wash you. You have no part with me. In Psalm 51, 1 to 2, I remember David, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me. I'll be whiter than so. So the second word from tree, from our King Jesus and the kingdom is wash. Jesus lovingly commands us to, uh, to, to be baptized and to receive the Holy Spirit. The cleansing and infilling of this new kingdom. We're graciously commanded to wash away by the water in the world our old lives filled and be filled with the Holy Spirit and a new life. Power and purpose that only can come. By the grace of God, right? The grace yeah, of God. Yeah, it can yeah, only yeah. come. It's like he washes you of yourself and fills you up with himself, right? In this, this new. And uh, it's interesting to know Jesus was talking about these partial washings that you had to do over and over again. But Jesus said, oh, I'm going to wash you and we're going we're gonna to do that once in a while. We're going we're gonna, to uh, claim you back. It's far superior. So every day got to get up and i got to drown that. You know the old Adam? i got to drown that old Adam every day. Um, because I don't want to live in um, the lifestyle of the old Adam. I want to live in the I lifestyle of the new Adam. Who's the new Adam? Jesus. Jesus Christ. I want to rise every day, and I want to live in the way of Jesus Christ. I want to die as a passive, carnal man. I want to rise as a proactive, spiritual man. I want to walk in. I don't. I want to walk in the way. I don't want to walk in the way of the first Adam. I want to walk in the way of the second Adam. Um, that's my life verse, Titus three, three through seven. <coughs> that at one time I was foolish. I've been, have you guys been there before? I was deceived. I have walked in all kinds of passions and pleasures. But when his kindness appeared to me and I encountered him, he changed me from the inside and he washed me and he filled me with his Holy Spirit. Have you gone through that? Amen. You know what I'm talking Amen. about? Amen. Okay. Um, cleansing of my stinky, dirty self and be filled with the clean fragrance of Christ every day. So, my friends, Jesus is the well. Drink deeply from him every day. Be cleansed every day. Be refreshed and renewed every day. Remember uh, uh, the Samaritan woman? 
There's two wells in that, right? There was the physical well of water, and then there was Jesus, right? Let's go to Jesus every day. Remember your baptism every day, baptismal well-being. Am I daily drinking deeply from the well of Jesus? Am I being well-watered? Am I spending time with him? Am I drinking in his word? Am I being renewed in the flow of grace from his Holy Spirit every day? Am I, you are unconditionally loved. You are unconditionally accepted. You are forgiven. You are free. You have a new identity in Christ, and it's not in the world. It's only in Him, right? It's only in Him every day. And are you taking care of, your, of yourself, physical well-being? I want to challenge you, taking care of the temple of your body. Are you exhausted or balanced? Are you getting enough rest? Am I working out or am I burning out, right? And watch that as well. Uh, are you vocationally well? Am I passion uh, directed in my calling and work life? Because you know what? Some men find out that they, maybe they need to make a, 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 a job change because are you working in the giftedness that God has given you? Am I being spirit-led, joyful in that work? Financial well-being. Do I claim ownership over my gifts from God? Am I being stingy with them, right? I love uh, to challenge myself. Or am I being a manager and stewardship of God's gift that is eager to bless and I'm a river of generosity to others. Does that, does that make sense right there? Does it flow through you? Third word I want to talk to you today, and you know, I put this out, is DNA. DNA. The third word of Jesus is this, in his kingdom is DNA. We are graciously commanded to obediently take on the relational lifestyle of Jesus and his kingdom. So I've turned from my old lifestyle. I've been washed of the old, and he's going to give me his lifestyle of loving God and loving neighbor. We are called to be imitators of the way of Jesus, um, not imitators of the pattern of this world uh, that Jesus lived here. And it's uh, epitomized in Luke 6, 12 through 19. Luke 6, 12 through 19. Listen to this. One of those days, Jesus went out to the mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. So what was the first part of Jesus' lifestyle? Pray, pray, to pray, pray and to pray, worship, pray. to worship, to love the Father. And you too, you and I, we are called to love the Father. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Love God. Love Jesus. Jesus and the up relationship with the Father. A lifestyle of daily worship. And that's just not on Sunday. Everything you do is worship. And, and how you go about doing it. And, and the way that we speak and how we conduct ourselves in life. Um, and so we give up and praises and prayers and reading the word and asking the Father and listening to his voice and even communion with, uh, with him uh, together as the body. Divine revelation from the king. He goes on here in 13. When morning came, um, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them who he also designated apostles, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John, brothers, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, and even Judas. So what was the second thing of Jesus' lifestyle? Worship was the first one. What was the second? Community. Community, like this, with brothers, right? You've got to be in relationship in the body because you were built for relationship. You, I love beaming because you men are having community together with one another. Worship and community. Um, love God's people. Love your neighbor. Jesus and this in relationship with his brothers and his disciples encouraging them. Love one another. Encourage one another. Accountability for one another. Bear each other's burdens. Serve together. Authentic relationships in the kingdom. Father, who of my brothers and sisters, you need to, we could ask, Father, who do I need to encourage today? And the, the first question of worship is, Father, who do you say I am? And that's what I want to live up. Okay? Numbers, um, and then look at this, 17 through 19, his DNA. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region of Tyre and Siren, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing every one of them. What was, his, what was the third thing of his life? It was mission, right? Mission to bring healing to the world. Go, make disciples. Matthew 28. Love our broken world and broken people. <coughs> Jesus in the out relationship of healing and transforming lives. The natural mission of the kingdom. Father, who do you want me to reach out to today? Who do you have in store for me to reach? So the DNA is this divine up relationship with the Father, to love Jesus, this natural out relationship to touch people in our broken world, and the in relationship of these brothers and sisters in Christ that we need uh, in community. Worship and mission and community and worship and mission and community. The fourth word today I want to share with you. I hope I have enough time. You should give me five minutes, all right? Uh, yeah. Feast. Feast. The next one is feast. 
Matthew 8, 11, I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And in 1 Corinthians 11, Paul said, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Um, so basically, the fourth word of feast really said that he's, commanded us to celebrate his life, his death, his resurrection, ascension, and this communal meal of the kingdom called the Lord's Supper. We re regularly receive um, the bread and, uh, and, and the wine of Jesus for forgiveness of our sins, strengthening of our faith. Um, we regularly go to feast on his love for us personally and corporately. That's what it is because you're not only celebrating now, you're celebrating in the future, right? Because each and every one of you is breathing eternally now and will be for years to come, right? And it's forever. And to feast on his never-ending love. Um, in the Old Testament, we look, look in the Old Testament and New Testament, uh, there are some important suppers there. But I just wanted to um, focus on a couple. The Last Supper uh, was both a Passover meal and the Exodus. And I taught my kids the Old, the old Covenant and the Old Testament. He honored that. You know, he's a... He's a, good, he's a good Jew, right? Jesus was a good Jew. Because it, he says, this was pointing to me. And then he, he showed him how it was pointing to him. And then he instituted it into the Lord's Supper, uh, the new covenant in the New Testament. So we need to live in that new covenant, right? The new covenant of Jesus through him. But then he says, it's pointing to that wedding supper when we're all going to celebrate, right? When you're going to come home to me. And uh, there's going to be a place for Lee. And so we are um, encouraged that we are going to live eternally. We can feast on his love. And um, also it makes me think of this. Men, I'm talking to men today, am I not? Yeah. Men, yes. How about feasting on the love of your family to supper together at night? Okay? I feast on their love. Talking and feasting on the love of your wife and your children. And uh, it's one of the things that is not optional in my family. At 6 p.m. at night, we will be home. We will be together. Lord willing, and we're going we're gonna to be together as a family because the Lord has given us that to you. Word number five, pray, men, pray. Matthew 6, 5, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in synagogues and on the street corners. But truly, I tell you, they've received the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen, and, and be humbling. And don't, he says, don't keep babbling, right? You just, uh, just pray. And the fifth word is pray, this daily conversation that you get to have with uh, uh, your Lord and Savior, the, the King of Kings. We're graciously commanded to talk with him. Uh, prayer is essential to our journey. Uh, so. I, I wanted to share with him, I want to show you how I prayed in the past. Um, it was kind of like a friend who used to call me and pick up the phone, and I'd pick up, hello, and the friend would just go off. You ever had this phone call? They go, blah, 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 and they think, thanks, and then they hang up on you, basically. <laughs> okay? Okay? That's how I used to pray, right? I used to pray. <laughs> I pick up the phone to the Lord, and Lord, um, I thank you. I need this, and I need this, like he's my heavenly waiter, and uh, they're just a, a this and this and this. And then uh, I basically hang up the phone on him. But you know what? what? What's missing in that relationship? What do I need to do? Listen. I need to listen, right? I, I wasn't listening. It's a two-way street, right? I just want to talk all the time, but I need to, uh, I need to listen uh, to the Father, okay? So um, the power of ask, he knows even before I'm going to ask him what I need. And so um, ask him, Lord, um, uh, who am I today? Um, what can I be about your, your, uh, your mission today? And um, who do I need to love today, uh, my brothers and sisters? And then listen, because he's going to tell you. Um, he's going to put it on your heart who you need to go to. We need to listen. We just need to praise the Lord, pray for our spouses. Do we need to pray for our spouses? Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. Wrap, a, wrap your spouse in the prayer every day for protection, your kids, community leaders. Word number six. Here we go. Give. Okay? But you're giving. Matthew 6, 1, 4. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to, uh, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets. To be honored by others, truly I tell you, they've received their, uh, their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so your giving may be in secret. And your father sees what you've done 
he will reward you. Give. Graciously commanded to give back our time, our talents, our treasures to our king and his kingdom that he's given to us. God is a gracious, is he not? He's a good and gracious God, is he not? He gives us all our blessings. He gave us, you know what? He gave us Jesus, right? Amen. God so loved that he gave. He gave. He gave his son. Thank you, God, for giving us Jesus. He calls us to be his people who graciously model him, and, and uh, we are in his image, that we are givers, okay? We have received so much, and we give to others, um, and uh, we are a gift of God. So we are not owners of what we uh, have. We are just managers, right? The difference between ownership and management, he owns everything. Psalm 50, I own everything, he says, right? You don't own a thing, right? <laughs> Let me say it again. You don't own a thing out there, man. I own everything, and I don't need, he, he says now, I love that, he says, I don't need a thing from you, right? I don't need a thing, right? But I'm going to give, I give you good gifts, right? Be the managers of those good gifts. Be the managers of the gift of uh, the people in your life and the resources in your life and the spiritual gifts in your life, right? To use those for your benefit, time and talent and, uh, and treasures. The final word, we're going to wrap it up, is this, and I think this is so important. It's the word multiply. Multiply. Word seven. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says, When Jesus came to them, he said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and what? Multiply. Make disciples. Multiply yourself. Right? Multiply yourself. Make uh, new learners of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I need to hear that tomorrow. I'm with you. Always. I'm always with you. Genesis 9-7 says too, I think he was saying to Noah, as for you, be fruitful, increase in number, and multiply on the earth and increase upon it. So the final word of Jesus is to multiply, to make disciples. You guys are doing that, right? That's All part right, of disciple. Um, commanded to multiply the kingdom, um, the abundant life that Jesus has given to you. Um, disciple somebody. Right? Mentor them. He has given, he has given you the gift of faith inside of you to give to somebody else. Don't keep it to yourself, right? Um, that's something that um, um, that's why I'm doing what I do in a high school, because I just wanna I just I just love kids, right? Some of these are fatherless kids who need somebody to believe in them. They're they're orphans and they're spiritual orphans. And um, I'm just there to multiply and give what God's given me to, to them as well. And I encourage you and I, I commission you guys to do that. Because the kingdom of heaven is not a kingdom of addition. It is a kingdom of multiplication. It is. Yes? God knows math, doesn't he? <laughs> we desire to be a movement that multiplies disciples and leaders and churches and worship all across our cities and our regions and our nation. Because life is not about me. It's about we. And I want all of you men that in the time that you have to leave a spiritual legacy because it is not about how much money that you acquire on this earth. It is about the spiritual legacy that you leave for an eternity with others. Because I tell kids, like, um, I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. I don't make a whole lot as a teacher, okay? And, uh, but I'm, but um, I am here for you because I know that you are forever, okay? You as people are forever. And so we want to do that. So... Just in saying, we need to multiply learners for Jesus, disciples, multiply leaders, multiply glory-giving children, right, who give glory to God, glory-giving families, filling up every neighborhood of Springfield and Decatur with the body of Christ, the glory-giving families. Um, and we're doing that through house churches, because we can multiply house churches, really cool, we multiply sideways and is like have a, a couple and then we can send out couples to do so and uh, we just pray about that but again men I have to go all right thank you so much for speaking uh, uh, having the opportunity to speak with you it's an honor it's a privilege uh, Bernie you also have a handout that I was going to give to you uh, I, but I couldn't copy it off so file it up, send the file to me and I'm gonna do it so you can hand it out to them those right. seven seven words and uh, God bless you men okay God bless your marriages God bless your children and your families. God bless your churches, this beautiful city that you live in. God bless BMIC. Amen. Amen. Amen.